Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and I wanted to start up a new weekly series, and this is going to be called Talking to the Wall, because that's basically what I do all the time, but at the same time this is going to be something a little different from the usual Vita Weekly updates. I do plan on doing this weekly, but I'm not entirely sure how I plan on going about this just, just yet. Not 100%, which is why I'm doing this as a sort of replacement for the Vita Weekly Update just at this point, so that I can figure out exactly how I want to go about things. So I figure instead of having to do any sort of like really major editing job, I'd probably just put some gameplay footage in the background that I could record whenever I felt like it. And the footage today is a video of Chaos Theory. To be specific, it's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory's PC version. I was doing a video on this game, but for some reason I just cannot get one good take of a video of this game. So this is the best take I got, where it actually went pretty well, but I had no game sound whatsoever. I'll leave a link in the description to the full video with the commentary in it, so you can watch it if you feel like it. First thing I want to do is I want to thank my patrons as always. Alan, Billy, Blizz, Brett, Caleb, Chen, Christoph, David, Edia, Eric, Gary, Joey, the other Joey, Twiarch, Matthew, Miguel, Mathaldu, Raymond, Rodrigo, Sack Chief, and Z. Those are my patrons right now, and if you want to show up on Talking to the Wall, or if you want to show up in any other video that I do, please go and support my Patreon, or buy something off PlayAsia. Either way, you'll be helping me out. So, I figured that to help people along with the trans transition from the Vita Weekly Update, I'm going to do a little segment where I go over the most interesting pieces of Vita news. I'm not going to do everything, but I'll do all the stuff that's the least interesting. Just a quick little mention of it. So, we have th two new games announced this week. We have a single screen monochrome platformer called Hand Cannon Janky Reality which will be out in either February or March next year. We have a retro-style platformer called Dragonfly Chronicles. The trailer makes it look absolutely horrible. I don't know if they encoded the trailer wrong, or if the Vita version of the game performs really badly, but for some reason the game just looks really unresponsive and awful in the trailer, which really isn't great. And we have the final piece of news, but this is going to carry over into what the majority of Talking to the Wall is going to be. And that's gaming news. I want to go over the more interesting parts of gaming news throughout the week and just give my little commentary on them. Whatever I can think of along the way. So, we'll get on to our first little bit of story here. Apparently, Code Mystics, who have been the people behind things like Super Star Wars, and I don't know, they didn't do the Port Windjammers, but they've done a lot of classic games. They also did the Atari Flashback Classics line. And originally we thought the first Atari Flashback Classics was going to come to the Vita because of the way the trophy list was set up, but that never happened. So when one popped up out of nowhere that was for Vita specifically, Everybody wondered what the bloody hell was going on, and as it turns out, they actually answered this on Twitter recently. They ported it themselves, with no approval from Atari whatsoever, and I didn't even think they could do that. Like, I thought they would have been under some sort of licensing, especially with the trophy list, because the trophy list has, like, images from Atari in it and all that. You don't think they'd be able to do that, like, submit a full-on trophy list without the approval of Atari. Apparently they've taken the game to Atari for approval, but, well, we don't know if it's actually gonna get through yet. So that kind of sucks if it doesn't make it through, but who knows, maybe someone will leak it at the end of the day. But yeah, how weird is that? The fact that they went behind their back to actually pour the entire bloody thing. It doesn't seem to be any sort of like, you know, just a simple port. It seems to be its entirely own thing with its own unique selection of games. It's kind of bizarre, really. So I'm not really sure what's going to happen with that. I just thought I'd bring that up because I thought it was interesting. So, Fallout 76. This is definitely one of the most uh, important pieces of news this week. It is screwed in so many ways. Not only was there next to no data on the actual disc, but the first download was about 47 gigabytes, and then in the patch that came out recently was another 47 gigabytes. They had to replace the entire game twice, instead of like including it on the actual disc and having iterative patching between the different versions. 
but it's apparently so buggy that it still got bugs from the release of Fallout 4 that modders had fixed within a few weeks. And it recycles so much content that as it turns out, the final boss, if anyone's still playing through it, so I'll give you a second to tune out here, the final boss is a recolored dragon from Skyrim. Not even kidding, it's the same model, it's, it's the same animations, and it just looks a little different. It sounds absolutely bizarre. And apparently so many people have started giving this like 5 out of 10s and 6 out of 10s, and it's like, if you really gave a shit, you'd give it lower than that. And some people did, but most have been hanging around the 5 area. And it just seems so weird that, they were, that Bethesda would willingly put out something this bad. Especially since, you know, Fallout hasn't exactly had the best reputation lately with Fallout 4 and all its DLCs being below average. They've got the gameplay loop right, which is loot dungeons, bring all the loot back, use it to prop yourself up for the next run through the dungeon. But the fact that it is currently sitting so low on Metacritic right now is hopefully a sign that they need to shape up or ship out. But then again, considering this is Fallout, it probably sold millions of copies, even if most of them are going back to whatever place they're coming from. But then again, we don't know the actual sales numbers yet. And if the actual sales numbers are, are in any way notable, they'll probably come up on another episode of Talking to the Wall. Artifact got buggered to hell and back. So here's the drill with Artifact. If you don't know what it is, it's the Valve trading card game that they're bringing out next week. And they had a little bit of a problem where, well, the entire game is real world economy. So you, you have to pay for boosters and you have to get cards out of those boosters. And you get a bunch of cards to start out with to make the two starter decks. And you can get cards from the starter decks in the booster packs. And before they rolled out a patch that would let you recycle them into the event tickets, it meant that you could get cards that were literally completely useless because nobody would want them because everybody got them. And you wouldn't actually be able to sell them because there'd be no bloody point. Thankfully, Valve, for once, were actually listening and listening so hard that they flocked to the bloody update thing to say, hey, we're doing this, this, and this, and we promise we're not doing anything too bad. Please let it go. See, I'm not actually that... Uh, that annoyed at Artifact's business model, especially as someone who's tried to play a lot of trading card games, like, uh, m just in general, like, I've tried to play Magic the Gathering, and it is an absolute, like, pain in the ass to get into if you don't have, like, a few friends who are playing it already, because I've tried more than once to get into it. I even went to one of those free events they had at the board game stores one day, but by the time I was able to actually get back out to actually have a couple of duels with someone, I call them duels, I don't know what they call them in um, Magic the Gathering terms, because I used to play Yu-Gi-Oh! But, in Magic the Gathering terms, I I only had like the basic starter deck, and they all had the, um, whatchamacallit, they all had cards that were so good that they could basically wipe the floor with me, and I just felt pretty, uh, pretty intimidated. And then there were the other like free-to-play ones on the computer, like, I've tried playing both Hearthstone and Magic the Gathering Arena, and both of them just have me feel like I need to grind for ages just to make it worth my time to get any sort of cards out of them or pay money for them. At the same time, when it comes to Artifact, which is promising to have a bloody real world, not so much real world market, but an actual market where you can buy and sell cards, and the fact that you are really only able to pay to get cards, it means that, well, at least I don't have to go over my head in the choice. Like, do I want to drop five bucks on these cards or do I want to go to the effort of actually getting them for free? No, you you basically have one choice. I know that sounds a, like a bit of a weird thing, but coming as someone who has suffered through a fair few free-to-play grinds in his day, the fact that they just aren't here is something that I can appreciate in a weird sort of way. I don't really know how to put it. It sounds kind of stupid when you put it that way. Like, oh, he, um, like, he's so dumb he's willing to pay for everything. I'm not. I'm just saying that I like the idea of it trying to replicate a, a real-world trading card game instead of going for this free-to-play thing where you have to grind for ages to get cards that you want. That's a, that's a good sign to me, at the very least. I actually have the game pre-ordered because I was interested in how it played after watching the Artifact Tournament. And considering that they also announced that there's going to be free competitive and free draft, 
There, there are event tickets you have to pay for, which will give you, like, entry into the paid events, which actually give you cards if you do well enough, and will also give you a ticket if you get, like, three wins. But, yeah, basically, they've made it so that you can play both Constructed and Draft for free without, like, getting any actual rewards. So, you know, I'm, I'm willing to actually give it a shot. And they also made it so that it's actually a lot more generous with how much you can play before the refunds don't become a thing. So, you know, that's good too. Apparently, Pokemon Let's Go sold 3 million copies in one week. And considering all the buzz I heard on the internet about how this wasn't a proper Pokemon game, I'm actually kind of surprised. If I'm being honest, I burned out on Pokemon a while ago. I barely got to, I think it was Black 2 before I decided that I just didn't want anything to do with this anymore, and I've been out of it for the past few generations. So, seeing that so many copies were sold in just one go is really amazing, actually. Because I didn't think it was going to do too well at all. But then again, I suppose with the Pokemon Go and Pokemon Let's Go thing going on with, like, little compatibility between the two, I suppose that uh, the that branding might have helped sell it a bit, and I guess people have been starving for a new Pokemon game for a while. I, wait, when did Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon come out? I don't, I don't even remember, but yeah, 3 million copies in a week is actually really impressive, so... Oh man, Nintendo's rolling in it. So Sony apparently skipping this E3, and by this E3 I mean 2019 E3. So, the rumors going around that they're both working on their next generation systems. I believe Microsoft has come out and said outright that they are working on the successor to the Xbox One and the Xbox One X. Sony hasn't said anything in particular, but you know, if they're not doing it by this point, they are really dragging their feet. And at this point, I can kind of understand why. It's a bit weird that they're skipping an E3 that they've gone to for like every year for the past 20 something years, but at the same time I kind of understand why. They're out of exclusives to show, which is the major one. Days Gone will be out by the time it comes around. A Ghost of Su Tsushima will probably be like a week away at most by the time that E3 rolls around. And all their other exclusives, God of War, Spider-Man, my phone just went off, maybe The Last of Us 2 will even be out by then. So they won't have that much to show. And for anyone who remembers their showing at this year's E3, it was an absolute eyesore. Like my, actually it was an everything sore when you think about it. It was a terrible idea. They should have just done the usual thing. They did this weird thing where they made it so that everybody was moved into different rooms for different games. So they'd move you into a room and then do like a little Ghost of Tsushima presentation. That isn't even how you pronounce that, I'm pretty sure anyway. They'd make you do one little thing there, then they move you into another room for a presentation on another game. But they miscalculated just how much time they would need and eventually they just moved everyone into a small room and started playing trailers. Which is what they should have done in the first place, but... Yeah, they kind of cocked that up real bad. Sony is starting to get really full of itself, especially with the whole moving the HQ to California and making the Japanese communicate with them in English. That is a terrible fucking idea. Nobody wants to do that. And the... Yeah, and just the general way they've been playing everything up recently is just... No, it's bad. They've been acting really full of themselves and they kind of need to cut it out before they do something really stupid. And to be fair, they already have with this Japanese censorship thing, but it can get worse. It can absolutely get worse. We all know the drill. The last major bit of gaming news this week is that there's a Steam sale on, and it'll be over in about four days, and then there'll be a bloody Christmas sale in like three weeks. So, <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit bizarre that there's a Christmas sale on that barely has any time to it. But, well, oh well, it's not that big of a deal. I don't personally have any recommendations, I've just been picking up a couple of VR games, but there's one recommendation that I'm going to make, and I wish I could talk about this, but I just don't have the time to actually make a video of it and put it up before the sale ends, but I saw an advertisement for the PC version of 428 Shibuya Scramble. It's down from 50 bucks US to 30, and that is a good deal for that game, because that game is really good. So, if you're looking for something good to buy in... What was that? If you're looking for something good, that uh, the horn just went off outside. If you're looking for something good to buy on the Steam sale, look up 428 
Shibuya Scramble. And by 428, I mean the numbers, not the numbers spelled out with words. So yeah, there was an episode of Talking to the Wall. I can't help but wonder how this is actually going to go down with the community. I'm still debating whether or not this will be weekly. I might make it fortnightly just to keep things more interesting. And I might also move it to Fridays so that I have a little bit more time to make videos because with how much I've had to work on bloody Flashpoint lately, sometimes I just haven't had time to make the videos. And that's why I did double videos on both Monday and Wednesday because I put those videos up thinking, oh, I'm probably not going to be able to make it this week. And then I did and then I forgot to unschedule the old ones. By the way, screw YouTube's redesign. They have made it so difficult to tell what videos I have scheduled in this new bloody creator um, whatever the bloody hell they want to call it, Creator Studio. They've made it so hard to tell what I've got unlisted and what I've got private, so I can go through and look through all my backlog videos really easily. But, yeah, it's dumb. It's really dumb and I don't like it, and that's one of the reasons why. The other reason is that I've been so bloody tired after working on Flashpoint most days that I just forget to check on certain things. So, there you go. I do apologize for that. And I apologize for this entire video because this is probably a horrible idea. My monitors just went off. Fantastic. Uh, so, if you're wondering what the upcoming videos are going to be this week, the Persona 3 and Persona 5 dancing games have their review and preview streaming embargo breaking sometime on Monday or Tuesday. I don't know exactly what the time is off the top of my head. But there won't be a Monday video because it, the embargo is a fair bit after my usual Monday video. And I'll be covering both games in one video because they're very similar to each other. So that'll be sometime early on in the week. The rest is going to be, well, honestly, I'm not sure. I asked for a view copy of Slayaway Camp, but I guess the developers haven't been paying that much attention to their, um, to their emails because of the whatchamacallit, because of uh, the Thanksgiving holiday. So, you know, chances are that might not be a thing. So if I don't have any other videos to do at that point, I do have a couple in mind. As I said, I wanted to do a video on 428, and I might just record, like, a rant on that, and, like, just put that out as a video this week. And I've also been playing a couple of games on my Win 2. One of them is something I actually picked up in the last Steam sale that I haven't gone around to playing in its entirety yet. And I hope to actually give that at least a decent video, even if it's just one that goes on the backlog for a couple of months. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Talking to the Wall. There's one last thing that I want to say, though. If you have any sort of questions about the gaming industry or just games in general that you'd like to hear my opinion on, please feel free to post them in the comments. I can use them to make Talking to the Wall just a little bit longer and a little bit more interesting. So, if you want to do that, there you go. Otherwise... See you next week or maybe next fortnight. I don't know yet, but if you like talking to the wall, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, comment, and share it around if you think it's worth the time. See you next week, fortnight, whatever.